Hi everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swellwatch on SurfingMagazine.com. January 16th, 2016, time for another El Nino update. Without a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks, although we've seen some epic surf over the last couple of months at times, a lot of people are asking, where is El Nino? Well, uh, we're still in El Nino. It's very much underway. I wanted to show a few things today. I wanted to show not just where we are uh, statistically. I wanted to show where we're going with this El Nino and how it did compare to other events, but more so on what we can really expect through the next month. So I want to really concentrate on February. That was a gangbusters month for rain in the 98 event. And we've also seen a very good comparison to surf from what we've seen out of the 97, 98 event event and some big differences what we've seen for the last five years or so compared to what the jet stream is doing now that can produce a lot more surf that could be headed to the west coast but affecting some areas differently than others also I wanted to do something different this time around for the next video I just want to encourage anybody if you want to show some of your photos that you've taken on any of the El Nino coverage if you have pictures of some big surf that's come in uh, some weather events I'll try to get some of these into my next video at the end of that so feel free to go ahead and email me any of your pictures along with a short description and I'll give you some photo cred and put that into my next video I'll try to get in as many as I can just uh, email me at uh, Nathan at NathanCool.com Right now, though, it's an episode of Finding Nino, so let's actually see where we are and where we're headed. Let's take a look right now. So the ever-familiar El Nino signal still coming off of Peru. We can see it in those sea surface temperature anomalies. Still a lot of red going on there. But there's a big difference to what we've seen when it came to the 98 event. Touched on this before, but we can see that there's a big difference in temperatures. A lot of colder water was across most of the Pacific back in 98. That's just not the case right now. So still have a lot of warm water that's residing in the Pacific. <clears throat> just a little side note, too. I've gotten some emails on thinking that, you know, could this be from the Fukushima event? Well, Fukushima Fukushima didn't happen in 1998, and there was a lot of warm water off Japan then as well. Um, also, it, there's just not enough energy that came off the cesium-128 to warm the entire Pacific this much. I'll do a calculation if anybody would like, but I can tell you right now that was just not the case. So I'll leave that for a video for another time. One of the more of those susceptible items that could be happening is some climate change is underway. We do know that from the land ocean temperature index, we've seen some warming since 98. Not quite a half a degree. It's been some. The oceans tend to warm uh, slower, at least their, uh, the readings because some of that temperature actually is then upwelled. So there's a lot of circulations that happen in the ocean compared to land, but without actually ringing the climate uh, change bell right now, uh, just knowing that there has been some warming, it could be something indicative of climate change that's warming our oceans right now, but really all that matters at this point for doing the forecast for El Nino is that we have a difference in temperature delta. So we had a large delta between warm and cold water in 98, and we've got a smaller delta today on what's going on. So that has an effect on all the uh, global circulations in the atmosphere and then what will come out of El Nino. El Nino has peaked, something that I talked about just briefly during my uh, last uh, report. And uh, we've seen that back in November, December it peaked. It is on the way down. Some models show that it may pick up again later in the year, but for right now we know that it's on the way out. Uh, that's not really going to affect us for the long term, but we can see some of the things that happened. This was the headline hyperbole here at the end of the year where people said we had the strongest El Nino. But you can see, though, on the red trend line for 2015, uh, it really trended lower overall compared to the 1997 event. So strongest El Nino, not necessarily. When we take a look at the three month mean then, taking all of this into consideration, and you might remember this from my prior videos, here's August, September, October, September, October, November, October, November, December, eh, we ended up pretty much where 1997 was, right on par. The ocean water depth also, this has been the weakest El Nino in that regard, uh, as far as the top three. So uh, 1997, very strong uh, temperatures at depth up to 300 meters in the El Nino zones of the Equatorial Pacific. 1982 came in second, but 2015 not so much. And just like in prior El Ninos, it's now time for those temperatures to start cooling, so they're dropping down. When we take a look at the rain that we've had, and this has been one of the big questions, um, I'm using Oxnard as a rain gauge, and so I've gotten some feedback from that. Just to clarify, is that uh, I use that as a rain gauge for a variety of reasons, not to get into here, but we take a look so far this year in yellow, we can see that yeah, we've gotten some good rain uh, fall. There was just a short period of a week or two where we'd gotten a fair amount. But when we talk about February, that's when things really picked up back in around the uh, 2000. 
excuse me, the 1997-98 event compared to where we are now with 2015-2016. Even the 82-83 event, it had some, you know, good spikes along the way, but it mostly was very active during the month of February. So that's the most active month to begin with, and with a El Nino that's paralleling 97-98 quite a bit, we might not expect a lot of rain until we get closer into the uh, second to third week of February, and I'll touch on more of that in just a second. This is the rain accumulation. Uh, we take a look at how much rain has accumulated since early 2015 and also then 82 and 97. And then this would finish out the entire El Nino year. So we could take a look at the big two uh, of the three and there was a lot of rain accumulation compared to where we are now. That little spike was just that rain that we had here a couple weeks ago. And so main reason for that, and I've talked about this on Facebook, is that uh, we've got this split in the jet stream. So a lot of high pressure that's still sitting off the west coast split in the jet stream as it comes in. As soon as I mention this, people think ridiculously resilient ridge, that high pressure ridge that plagued us for so long. This is what it looked like, this is 2013. This area here was dominated by high pressure. The jet stream was basically stopped in its tracks. It had a leg that went up north, guided most of the storms away from the west coast and left the west in severe drought. That is just not the case right now. So we have something that actually looks a lot better. So this is a recent uh, model from uh, FN Mock showing the jet stream. We can see that the jet stream is getting very close. This is allowing storms coming out of the Western Pacific to gain momentum, gain strength, and continue to throw a swell before they get knocked the heck out of them like they were back in the drought years of the uh, La Nina. Weather, though, still being kind of tossed to the north. Get to that shortly. We've got here high pressure sitting off the west coast. That's what's blocking that jet stream. We can see then storms coming in. They're throwing most of their precipitation to the north. A little bit though is headed down our way. So it's not that we won't see any rain out of this, it's just not as much as we could if that uh, high pressure was gone and the jet stream was slamming right into us. We can see some comparisons though too. This is a La Nina year, 2013. This is a little bit harder to read. Here's a Baja here and the Aleutians are over here. So this is the Western Pacific in this region. You can see that this line pushing up here, that's the ridiculously resilient ridge. That was pushing the jet stream up to the north. When we take a look at a La Nina year from 2010, we can see that that actually has dropped. So we don't get that ridge in there. Notice something though familiar to 2016. We have this gap in here, that split of the jet stream. That's our west coast high. So it's not uncommon for that to happen, but there are some bigger differences too. When I was talking about the difference in delta of our temperatures affecting our ocean circulations, we can see that there's a difference of high pressure here. And this was uh, more over, when we get into more of the, the Russia or the over top of some of the uh, European continent. Uh, but then when we look at this year, it's a lot farther away. And it also penetrates over the pole. Uh, very then a, a drastic difference in the amount of low pressure in the Western Pacific and then also going into uh, what would be Eastern Russia. So we've got a large difference between other El Nino years than what we have now, but once again, no two El Ninos are alike. And of course, we talked about this in the last video, is that there's a responsibility of oak of the world's circulations, in this case, Hadley cells, um, that are moving our atmosphere around. Those are all based on the deltas of the temperature that we deal with across the ocean. And since we have a major delta difference compared to 1998, then of course that's all going to be affected. We're surf headed right now. Well, this is the $64,000 question. We've got some big stuff headed our way, not just for tomorrow and not just from what we've seen, but we can see why uh, we've got a good amount of swell. The jet stream showed a little picture of it down here. Nice, nice, nice. It's at a low latitude, it's straight, it's got no blocking going on, so as these storms form, this, these are sea heights, they travel unabated across the Pacific. So they are able to get a lot closer to us and hold their fetch together as they do. When we take a look at the weather though that's associated with that, this is a precipitation model, we see the strong low pressure. Right, and this is the weather front that's associated with it. Here's that high pressure though off our coast, so most of that precipitation is staying to our north where the jet stream is then guiding us, but not before strong swell is pushed our way. Looking ahead then into the month of February, things are looking to start out probably dry, a little bit of rain here and there, 
But uh, here's a model for the end of January, and of course these are more of a hope and a prayer looking into the crystal ball, and it can get a little fuzzy the longer range model that you look at. But we see low pressure systems here that would still be coming in, uh, probably more to the north because once again we'd still have a lot of high pressure that would be dominating our area. We still have that strong jet stream uh, toward the end of the month, we're still looking at that, so this is very good, this is more of a polar view, so we got more of a rotational set of Mercator projection. So we can still see that a good jet stream being able to guide storms as they come out of the western Pacific. Here's a little bit longer range. We can see after the swell that's going to be hitting us tomorrow, we can see that yeah, here's one 22nd, 23rd time frame, probably really peak on the 23rd. A few days behind it, another one, and longer range weather models show that there would be even more. And once again, they get the ride in that ideally placed jet stream to drive surf to the west coast and especially southern California. Take a look at comparison, harvest platform, this is CDIP data. And we can see that during the 98 event we had Big Friday, some other big swells that had come in. We've already outdone that in January of this year. We don't know exactly what's going to hold for the rest of the month, but we already know that we've got 23rd, that'll be in this time frame, another big swell is going to be coming in, and more along the lines of it. But the point here being is that things really didn't pick up until the end of January for surf things really then picked up for rain in February. And so this is 1998, the amount of rain. This block, once again, I'm showing this would be a forecast area. We've had some rain in Southern California. There's a little bit more forecast, but the trend line right now is going lower. We've got to see a big change in the jet stream before any of that's going to change. So for right now, we're taking a look at a less likelihood of rain over the next few weeks, but we're looking at definitely some good El Nino type storms. Those El Nino type storms though are going to look at more surf for Southern California and not so much uh, in the way of rain. Uh, we've got that jet stream, it's ideally placed, uh, no doubt about it. We're going to get a lot of swells still coming out of the Western Pacific. That's going to continue for a while. So if there's a silver lining to this whole uh, cloud is that we have a uh, possibility of cleaner surf in through the month of February, but still possibly epic in uh, size. As far as though the rain goes, that's the downside to the whole thing. Now, Northern California and Central California and even farther north could still see quite a bit. We're still looking then, if that happens, a decent amount of snowfall up in the Sierras. That can give us some drought relief, but one of the questions I've had before is shouldn't that be all that we're measuring? No. Uh, there's a lot more to drought relief than just our reservoirs, which are providing water for residential customers, we also need rain throughout our entire wildlife and also into our natural aquifers as well. So once again, uh, for my next video, uh, if you'd like to be able to post some pictures and possibly see them and get some photo cred, go ahead and email them to me at nathan at nathancool.com. But for right now, that's about all I've got. If you'd like to stay updated, though, on more of these videos, we've got a lot more information over the next few weeks as we really get into February, and I'll be posting these more frequently. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. As soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be notified. You'll be the first to know. Also, you can follow me on my forecasts on Surfing Magazine. You can go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com, and I concentrate on Southern California. And if all else fails, feel free to follow me on Facebook. Sometimes a quick post is all it takes to keep everybody updated in between these videos and in between my reports on Surfing Magazine. You can follow me at facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. Well, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.